You have questions, we have answers. Back with another quick clip. We had a question that came in, um, an individual was thinking about you know, creating their own estate plan, and, and we talk a great deal in our content about how estate planning can avoid family conflicts down the line and things of that nature. Uh, would you share some of your thoughts in terms of you know what you see and what you talk to your clients about as it relates to this? We all see it, hopefully not in our own families, but in, in many other families, you can see conflict. And when you think about the process, it's it's fairly predictable as to why that conflict you know may arise. Um, someone dies, and emotions usually are, go you know straight up. So it's a very emotional time for everybody. Um, at that point in time, there's a legal document that's appointing an executor or a trustee or someone, and the people who don't get appointed are sitting there thinking, well, why were they appointed and I wasn't? So you know that's. That's an added element that's um, difficult. Uh, very often you have a husband and wife, and let's say the father dies and the wife's alive and you have a surviving spouse and everybody's whispering in her ear. They're, they're giving advice, well-intended advice, but biased advice, you know, coming from where they come from. And that, that may or may not be the proper advice for the person. And then you have kids and grandkids and some of them are spenders, savers. Um, very often they come with their own spouses who are whispering in their ears going, hey, why is this happening? Why is that happening? And, and the whole thing is governed by an impersonal legal document that's hard to understand. So years ago I heard, I heard someone say it, which I thought was good, which is, you know, how do I divide my estate without splitting up my family? A lot of times this is something that just folks don't get to. Um, and then when they do get to it, they really don't understand it. Therefore, it's difficult to communicate what it actually means. And then you have all these other, let's just call it noise that comes out that's sort of a in your ear. And it's just, it's a real confusing place to be. And then a lot of times they're making decisions in a state of grief, which as we all know, isn't, isn't the greatest uh, it's not where we, we, we make our greatest decisions, right? So from, from your perspective, you've been doing this, you know, 30 years working with families. And what are some of the what are some of the strategies or things that you've you've implemented in the past or that you do for clients today to alleviate some of this? Well, if you think about the conflicts that happen, um, sometimes it's over money, but very often it's not. It's over other things because it's easy to, to divide cash. Or if you have 500 shares of Apple and you have five kids, 100, 100 shares per kid, easy, no problem, check the box. Very often it's the other issues that get in the way that create the conflict that we all want to avoid. Because the last thing we want is to go through life, create wealth, grow wealth, protect wealth, and then have it cause issues. Some of the typical things that we have seen arguments over um, that we have been very good at avoiding are assets such as jewelry, mom's ring, dad's watch, furniture, cars, China, you know, all those things like that, tangible personal property. They call it in the legal document. It's usually in the first or second provision of the will that says what happens with tangible personal property and the boilerplate legal document says, okay, Everything's going to go to the surviving spouse, and then it goes to the kids. And it will say in there, you can leave a memo or a list as to how these assets are divided. The problem is most people don't create that list. So what happens is at the end of the day, here's all these things, and it goes to the kids, and it says, okay, you figure it out, rather than the parents sitting down and, and understanding who their kids are and trying to figure out how do we take these emotional conflicts out of the equation when people are not thinking clearly? So that, that's a key area. Another key area is what I touched on earlier, which is the selection of executors or trustees. You know, if, if I pick uh, my son or my daughter or whomever to be a trustee, uh, the one who isn't, they're feeling left out. And so very often we'll have families make sure they outline, we've selected so-and-so to be the trustee or the executor because 
they're more local, they have access. It's not that we love them anymore or sure. trust them anymore. It's just, they're the logical person for this position. Um, vacation homes and properties are also emotional assets. And vacation homes are great. The lake house, the beach house, the, the ski lodge, you know, the place in Florida, because it attracts children and grandchildren to come see mom and dad. So it's a happy place. It's a good asset that can turn into a bad asset or a conflict asset when it goes to the next generation, everybody's like, hey, we wanna keep this because we have great memories here. But now, how are the kids gonna divide the calendar? Who gets it for 4th of July? When it needs a roof and one kid doesn't have the money to contribute to the roof, you know, it's an asset that can turn good to bad. So we work with our families to try to figure out, okay, how do we manage this asset? Can we manage it? Will it still be a positive going forward? And then the last thing is private businesses. Um, they can be tricky uh, when you have, especially when you have children that might come in the business and other children that won't come in the business. And the business very often is a large balance sheet item. You know, it, it can create conflicts if not worked around. It can be worked around, sure. but very often it's not taken to that next level, Brian. And Chris, I know one of the things that you've done for years is you run these fire drills or you can call them lifeboat drills in terms of something happening and, and really stress testing that estate plan, um, you know, in a time in which you're not dealing with the grief because it is a test run. And, and I I just think that's an excellent program that you guys run. It's, uh, I don't know if you want to comment on that at all or. Yeah, sure. It, it's, um, it, it, this happens pretty much every single time we, we take what could be a 40 page legal document and we put it on a one page flow chart and we'll show it to a husband and wife and we'll show them, okay, this is, this is what's going to happen. This is what your document says. This is who's in charge. This is who will be in charge when you pass. Here's how assets will flow through your document. Um, and we show them exactly what will happen and they're dumbfounded as to yeah how they got that document. They, they, they can't believe it. And it's really because of the process. I mean, they hired a lawyer at hundreds of dollars an hour. They, the lawyer is speaking in legal terms very often. Uh, that is beyond their comprehension. Uh, they're talking about their death, which is never fun. And so they end up with a document that takes it partially down the field but it stops, it doesn't address their family's needs. And so what we do is we just take that document and then we, we finish it. We, we talk to them about, okay, tell us about your kids. How, how will they react? How would they react if they got a large sum of money? Um, what are they like with money? How are their marriages? Um, all those intangible things, because parents know their kids. I mean, they know their kids, they know their grandkids. They have a pretty good feel how everybody interreacts. This document typically doesn't take that piece. So all we try to do is put the finishing touches on it, modify the document and get it to a point where we're going to avoid the conflicts. And, you know, because everybody wants their wealth. You, you want to you want to live off it. You want to grow it. You want to protect it. And then you want it to have a positive impact. And there's nothing worse than wealth creating a negative impact and splintering things. Yeah, Chris, well said. I especially love the fact of, of how you, you humanize it, right? And, and to use your words, finish you know, that, that process. And that, I think, is a missing piece, especially as it relates to you know, them now owning their own plan and being able to communicate that to their family so everybody's on the same page. So, uh, Chris, really appreciate you being here. Really appreciate your expertise. Thanks again for coming on the show today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Brian. Have a good one. You too. And if you or anybody else has questions uh, they'd like answers to, they can feel free to email us at qa at marinwealthadvisors.com. Thanks for watching.